Today on the Home Winemaking Channel, we're gonna go through a handful of budget-friendly wine bottle fillers. I'll tell you which ones I like and which ones I don't like and which one I would choose if I had a little bit of money to spend and wanted to make my life easier. If you like winemaking videos like this, make sure to subscribe below. And if you think this has really helped your wine in any sort of substantial way, make sure to swing by my Patreon site, patreon.com slash make wine so you can support the channel there. Now, as we're approaching the grape harvest in the Northern Hemisphere, this is usually a good time that I find to bottle a lot of wines because I know I'll be needing a lot of this storage capacity in the very near future. So we've been bottling all kinds of stuff. This is a Merlot Cabernet Sauvignon Petit Syrah Rosé that was made from some Saunier juice. That's when you pull juice off the grape skins. It gives you a little bit of a better skin to juice ratio for your red wine, but it also allows you to make a second wine from those red grapes, which would be a rosé style wine. I've recently bottled some Zinfandel. Um, I bot bottled the Backyard Red Blend from last year, and this year the Backyard Wine Grapes are looking incredible. We'll give you an update on that at some point, but we're looking really, really good. Everything is just going great. But, you know, as I get into bottling all these wines, I always think, is there a better way to do this that is budget-friendly, um, not something that costs $300, $400, $500, and also works for these smaller batches of wine? There are some great bottle filler options if you have a little winery or if you're bottling, you know, 60 gallons plus at a time. You've got these three and five spout fillers. Um, if you've got a deep wallet, you can use something like the Enomatic vacuum bottle filter, but all those are really, I wouldn't say budget friendly for the home winemaker. What you probably have if you've ever bought a wine making kit would be one of these fillers. So this would just be your standard bottle filler. It has a little valve on the bottom that in this case is not spring loaded. So you just let go of it and let gravity do the job. And when it's sitting down, it fills. When you let go, it stops. This is a great little bottle filler for this sub $10 range. I've honestly used the heck out of these. Um, I, I have some complaints. Now, if you're buying wine bottles like, you know, at the local home brew shop, they often sell these bottles that have a flat bottom. They usually cost about, you know, a dollar to a dollar twenty-five a bottle. You buy them in a 12 pack. These fillers work great. Um, what I found lately though, more recently, I end up using these punted bottles. So these bottles that have a punt at the bottom, it's this kind of domed shape in the glass and man are these fillers a pain for that you're always trying to kind of balance it on the dome they could easily fix the issue by just making a longer pin at the bottom if this pin stuck out by say you know another half inch i think you'd have no trouble but unfortunately that's not the case so I've been, again, just looking for some better solution out there. Here's another variation on this kind of simple, super budget wine filler. This one has a spring. Um, I honestly don't really like the spring-loaded version because now you have to have a hand on it at all times. So if you're trying to cork and fill at the same time, you can't use both those hands to cork while that bottle is filling. So if you're gonna do this, I'd recommend the one without a spring, which might save you like a dollar in the process too. These are all 5 sixteenths. You can go up to 3 eighths. I wouldn't recommend going as high as like a half inch diameter bottle filler because they fill so fast, it's really hard to control um, stopping it. And what I also find is when you get up to that diameter, like with these small ones, you fill up to the top and you pull it out and it leaves just enough space for the cork and just that little plug of air that you want above it. With the half inch, you end up leaving actually too much space below the cork. So I don't recommend those particular bottle fillers. So in my quest for a better bottle filler that won't have those issues with the punted bottles, I came across these Ferrari bottle fillers. So it sounds super fancy, 
Ferrari. And unfortunately, I like, cannot stand this thing. I struggle to get it to shut off. I've read lots of mixed reviews. Some people like them, some people can't stand them. What I found is I bought two of these and neither of them came with the cap that doesn't have a tube. So it, it doesn't shut off. It just shoots wine out of the vent like crazy. I can sort of get it to shut off if I pinch off the tube and then adjust the vent. Even if you do get them to shut off though, so the way this works is you push it down to fill. It should in theory automatically stop, but then before you move it to the other bottle, whatever you do, don't forget to pinch it to shut it off or you'll again spray wine everywhere. So. I just got to thinking, even if I get this thing dialed in, which is a major pain, I'm still most likely in any given carboy of wine going to just spray wine all over the place because I'm certainly going to forget to unpinch this at some point. So not a big fan of this thing. If you use this and you like it, maybe mention something in the comments because maybe there's something I'm missing, but so far not a fan at all of this. Uh, Ferrari bottle filler. If you don't want to use a technical bottle filler at all, you can use a bucket with a spout or I've in a pinch used this um, Spidel fermenter um, with a spout because what I'll normally do at the time of bottling is often some kind of blending or at least temporarily move the wine into either a bucket or a larger tank just to mix things like um, sulfite if you're just kind of doing a dial in there or like I said any sort of blending but what I found is the spout works like really pretty good even though it's a little bit of a primitive thing I don't recommend putting a tube on the spout just put the bucket or the container on a table and put the bottle right up to the spout no tube then you have no dripping and it works really quite good but Again, it wasn't my ideal setup. What I really, really wanted to find was an automatic bottle filler, so something that would shut itself off when the bottle was full, but also that um, when I pulled the filler out, it didn't, I didn't have to do anything fancy. I could just pull it out and move it to the next bottle. And that's when I found the um, Buon Vino Super automatic bottle filler. So this is what I've been using lately. These are a little bit more expensive than everything I've shown up to this point. The Ferrari bottle fillers are about 12 or 13 bucks. This is about 30 bucks, but I would say it's $30 really well spent. And the way that this uh, bottle filler works, it has a lot of simple advantages over the Ferrari in this case, but also just over these little wand style bottle fillers. So the first thing I like about this bottle filler is one, it actually shuts off. That's like the most important thing about an automatic bottle filler. But two, this vent tube, you can actually start your siphon by um, sucking on the vent tube. So if you just put this thing in a bottle, click it, as if you're gonna start it and suck on the vent tube, you can get the siphon started. Um, this has an adjustment, so you can easily dial in the shut off, like how sensitive it's gonna shut off. It kind of also dials in the flow, but really the reason you're adjusting this screw is to adjust the shut off. If you adjust it outwards counterclockwise, it'll shut off easier. If you adjust it in, it'll be less sensitive for the shut off. So what I do is I get it started, at least for your first setup, just get the thing started and then start to unscrew the little regulator thing until it shuts off on its own. From there, you can turn it back in a little bit until it starts filling and um, shuts off when the wine hits the top. You, if it's set up too sensitive, it'll shut off before the wine hits the top when it's set up just right. As soon as the wine touches this, it shuts off. It's really, really responsive. When it shuts off, this little thing clicks up. If you go to start it on another bottle, you just put it in, click it down. 
This is awesome. I, <laughs> I really have been digging this thing. I bought this with my own money. I'm not being given this or anything. Um, yeah, I think it's kind of solved my needs for an automatic bottle filler. I've heard some people say that they can actually use this bottle filler with a vacuum pump attached to this little hose. Now you'd wanna have some sort of catch can in between the filler and the pump just in case it kind of burps anything out. But I mean, that's awesome. If anyone's done that, make sure to mention in the comments below. The one bad review that I've heard but I haven't experienced myself is that this little rubber bung thing here, this stopper can crack over time. But I've since noticed that if you look at any pictures of this, it'll have a black stopper, whereas this one has a white stopper. So I think that might be something that they have since improved upon. I can't say for sure. If you have any other options that I haven't mentioned here that fit the budget friendly, you know, sub $50 range for filling a wine bottle, make sure to mention that in the comments below. I always lo love to hear what my subscribers are doing for their wine and we can kind of help crowdsource the best results or the best answers for some of these bigger winemaking questions. Hope you like this video. Um, good luck on your bottle filling. Thanks for watching.